welcome back to Dead of Winter. And today we're going to go explain the Long Night expansions. So they have a number of different modular expansions. These can be added either as a singular module or combined as the players feel they wish. Bear in mind these expansions may change the difficulty of existing objectives. They can be used in combination with the original Dead of Winter to provide a larger spread of characters and objective cards. There are a number of various tokens, um, such as the spare tokens, which work as wounds, um, as well as explosive traps or barricades. I will explain these during a playthrough if they come up as necessary. For the purpose of this video, I will just explain the main mechanics of the three modules. So the first module is the improvements module. So four cards are dealt out if the improvement module is being used. And the improvements module is indicated by the hammer with the moon icon. The moon icon showing that it belongs to the long night expansion. And this card meaning it involves the improvements modules. You can find the same, the same icons in the crisis deck and in some other crossroad effects. This will be removed or added in the game as necessary. If you reveal a card that provides an improvement, an improvement token is added and you resolve that card. So once per round, if there is at least one helpless survivor token at the colony, players may collectively spend two action die and place two fuel cards in the waste pile without using their effect. This raises morale by one. For instance, this DVD player needs one advancements token, whereas Bedin needs four. At the beginning of each round, all non-exiled players may roll an extra action die or remove one despair token from a survivor they control. This can greatly help the game, providing you get the improvement effects. The second module is the bandit, as indicated by the bandit hideout and these lovely tokens here. If a card reveals the bandit icon, um, we'll also have the moon icon to indicate a long light expansion, they get placed at the locations indicated here. So one and four being the police station and the library. So one bandit gets put in the police station and the other gets put in the library. Bandits can be attacked, providing your survivor is at the same location. You follow the attacking rules as explained in our original Dead of Winter video for attacking survivors. The bandits have an attack score of four or plus. If the attack is successful, the bandit is removed from the location. When adding zombies, bandits count as survivors. So for instance, resolving a zombie turn, this police station will get two more survivors. One will break the barricade, as that's the only entry point. And the second zombie will move in place. If there are no survivors at the location and the place becomes overrun, all the bandits get removed from the location. The problem with bandits is they like to scavenge. So after resolving the as zombies section in the round summary, you then take a single card for each bandit at a location. This gets put in the bandit hideout. The bandit hideout is a special location which can be visited in order to collect the scavenged pile. There are special rules for searching and attacking, and they are explained on this location. The same rules apply for searching. However, a die must be rolled again to and then follow the same effects. This is the same for attacking. The attacking rules are the same as per written, but you roll a further die to then, to then resolve the effect. If a player 
has been voted and exiled, providing they are not the betrayer, they then become the leader of the bandits. In addition to the other rules related to exiled players, whenever bandits are placed during the reveal crisis, they don't go to the location on the card the player gets to choose. This may allow an exiled player to complete their objectives. The third module is the Raxon module. The Raxon module is indicated by the triangular icon with a skull in the middle and the moon. This can be added or removed from play as necessary. Raxon is a special location and has more powerful items. So each Raxon's got special rules, so each time a survivor searches, the normal search rules apply, but they must roll for exposure, as it is a dangerous area each time they search. There are pill effects in this in this module. The pill effects can be found found in the side effect pile. There is a positive effect and a negative effect. You must roll a die and follow the effects on this card. This will tell you whether you have the negative effect, whether your survivor dies, or whether you get the positive effect, as indicated by the side effect card. Any pill effects is a permanent equip and this remains with you for the rest of the game. Raxon being a dangerous area means that it has to be contained. This is explained in the audio logs. So each round, a player must use a containment code by spending an action die. This audio log is visible for all players. If the containment log is matched, players get to vote. Uh, a thumbs up means they discard the, con the audio log and therefore not triggering the experiment. If the players choose a thumb down option, they're allowed to add three less zombies into the colony. So if there was, for instance, six survivors, they're allowed to place only three zombies if there was a thumbs down at this location. If a thumbs down option was chosen, then the corresponding zombie indicated here as the code name and in the back of the rule book is placed. They count as special zombies. Special zombies can only be killed with a regular attack and other game effects such as items and character abilities that do not involve an attack or exposure traps that would normally kill a zombie do not affect special zombies. Special zombies cannot be moved by any game effects except for those listed on their encounter cards. When performing an attack at a location, if there is a special zombie there, that special zombie must be attacked first. Each time a survivor attacks a special zombie, they must roll for exposure. Unless a character ability, equipped item, either prevents a survivor from rolling. If the survivor is still alive, you roll a die and apply the corresponding effect of the special encounter card. If the special zombie is removed and there are no more special zombies of the same type in play, the audio log gets removed. The carry encounter is listed on the back of the audio log so if that zombie is attacked the survivor is alive they must resolve the effect here. So 426 he looks too clean too normal to be a zombie and yet you can tell from looking at it something's wrong. You can't take any changes, chances and this carrier is removed from the board. The normal attack rules are followed and a die is rolled after the attack has been resolved. Thanks for watching the Long Night Expansion tutorial. Remember to keep updated on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Remember to leave a like, subscribe and click the bell button to get notified of our latest video. The Long Night Expansion can be added modular, so one individual at a time or all together. Join us for our, our playthrough, which we'll have fairly soon, and which will be taken on Dead of Winter, The Long Night, 
Until then, see ya.